In this lesson, we're going to learn how to factor trinomials when a equals 1. So far, we've factored out greatest common factors, and we've talked about factoring a difference of perfect squares, but now we're going to be factoring trinomials. Now, before we start, I want to practice a skill. What numbers multiply to give you 20 and add to give you 9? This is kind of a game of guess and check. You want to think of all of the factor pairs for 20. So 1 times 20 would give you 20, but that would add to give you 21. 2 times 10 gives you 20, but adds to give you 12. 4 times 5 multiplies to give you 20 and adds to give you 9. So the number, the factor pair that you're looking for is 4 and 5. Now what numbers multiply to give you 30 and add to give you negative 11? Well, so if two numbers multiply to give you a positive, you know that they're either both positive or they're both negative. Since this factor pair adds to give us a negative, they must both be negative. So we think of the factors of 30. We've got negative 1 and negative 30, but that adds to give you negative 31, so it's not that one. Negative 2 and negative 15, but that adds to negative 17 negative 3 and negative 10? Nope, it's not that pair. What about negative 5 and negative 6? Uh, that's the pair that adds to give you 11. So it would be negative 5 and negative 6. What numbers multiply to give you negative 12 and add to give you 1? Well, if two numbers multiply to give us a negative, we know one of them's negative and one of them is positive. And they're adding to give us a positive 1, so we must have more positives than more negatives. So it could be something like negative 1 and positive 12, or negative 2 and positive 6, or negative 3 and positive 4. Uh, that's our pair. That one adds to give you positive 1. Let's practice one more of these. What multiplies to give you negative 15 and adds to give you negative 2? So this time, they multiply to give you a negative, so you know we have a negative and a positive. But the result when we add them is two negatives, so we must have more negatives than we do positive. So the bigger number is going to be negative. So it could be 1 and negative 15. Nope, that's negative. That adds to negative 14, so it's not that one. 3 and negative 5. Yep, that adds to negative 2. So that's our factor pair. Okay, keep that skill in mind because we're going to use it in a little bit. Before we do that, I want to review multiplying binomials. So you just did this on your quiz. And you remember you did x times x was x squared. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. And then you combine your like terms in the middle. x squared minus 2x minus 15. And we'll do this second one, x minus 4 times x minus 7. So x times x is x squared. x times minus 7 is minus 7x. Negative 4 times x is minus 4x. And minus 4 times minus 7 is positive 28. So we get x squared minus 11x plus 28, and then we're just going to skip that one. The reason I wanted to review this is because I want you to see where these numbers come from. This minus 15. What numbers did we multiply together from the original problem to get that minus 15? That came from multiplying the positive 3 times the negative 5. Then the next question is, where did the minus 2 come from? Well, it came from where we did negative 5x plus 3x. Well, negative 5 
plus 3 is negative 2. So those two numbers in the binomial multiply to give you the constant term, but they add to give you the middle term. The same thing happens over here. We get positive 28 by multiplying negative 4 and negative 7. But we get the negative 11 by adding the negative 4 and the negative 7. So that skill of numbers that multiply to give you one number and add to give you the other number are going to help us when we're factoring. Because factoring, remember, is taking it apart. So we're going to be taking the trinomials and figuring out which, which binomials multiply together to give you that. So the trinomials that we factor are trinomials that where a is equal to 1. That means the coefficient of your x squared is just going to be 1. So 1x squared plus bx and plus c. We'll have other lessons where we discuss what to do if a doesn't equal 1, but for all of the ones we're doing today, when we need to factor, a is going to be equal to 1. So we've got, we're going to factor x squared plus 7x plus 10. And what we're looking for is what are the two binomials that multiply together to give you this trinomial. Since the front number is just x squared, we're going to put an x in the two front spots. We can just start out with that already in place. Now we want to have numbers that multiply to give us 10, but add to give us positive 7. So we want a factor pair that multiplies to give you 10 and adds to give you 7. So negative, sorry, positive 1 times positive 10 adds to give you 11. So that's not it. 2 and 5 add to give you 7. Okay, that's the one we want. So since 2 times 5 is 10 and 2 plus 5 is 7, we know that the factor pair we want is 2 and 5. They were both positive numbers, so plus 2 and plus 5. These are the two binomials that when we multiply them together, we get x squared plus 7x plus 10. Okay, let's look at the next one. It says factor x squared minus 9x plus 18. So a is equal to 1. We're looking for the two binomials. Since it's 1x squared, the front of both binomials is just going to be x. Now we want to know what multiplies to give you 18 and adds to give you negative 9. Well, since they multiply to give you a positive, it has to either be positive positive or negative negative. And since they're going to add to give us a negative, both numbers must be negative. So they're both going to be negative numbers. So we could have negative 1 and negative 18 but that doesn't add to negative 9. Negative 2 times negative 9, but that adds to negative 11. Negative 3 and negative 6, now that's our pair because that adds to negative 9. So minus 3 and minus 6. Now there's always the question, does it matter where I put the minus 3 and the minus 6? And the answer is no. You could put x minus 6 and then x minus 3. Same thing on the one above it. It could be x plus 5 times x plus 2. Multiplication we know is commutative, so the order doesn't matter. Okay, on the next one, we have x squared plus x minus 90. So we're going to start out with our parentheses. x times x is going to give us the x squared. Now we need numbers that multiply to give us negative 90, but add to give us, well, what's the coefficient of our x here? Positive 1, so add to give us 1. Now negative 90 has a lot of factors, 
And since it's negative, we know one of our numbers is going to be negative and one is going to be positive. So it could be something like negative 1 and positive 90. But that's 89. That's way off. I notice that since it ends in a 0, that 10 is going to be one of the factors. 10 times what gives me 90? 10 times 9? So what if it's negative 9 and positive 10? What does that add to give me? Positive 1. So that's my factor pair. So we're going to put the minus 9 in one of the parentheses and the plus 10 in the other set of parentheses. You'll notice that for these right now, we're not solving. We're just factoring. So we are just pulling these things apart. Like when you write 15 is equal to 3 times 5, and that's all you do. You're just pulling it apart. Okay. Now, remember that we said the other day when I taught you about greatest common factor, you always take the greatest common factor out first. There might not always be a common factor, but we always look. On the ones we just did, there was no common factor. When you look at those problems, x squared plus 7x plus 10, no common factors. On x squared minus 9x plus 18, the 9 and the 18 have a common factor. The x squared and the 9x have a common factor. But all three of them have to share the common factor. So none of those had one. This problem, however, 2x cubed plus 22x squared plus 56x, this one has a common factor. And so we're going to look for numbers, and we look for variables. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's both. This one, they have a 2 in common, because all of those numbers are even. And you have an x cubed, an x squared, and an x, so they all have an x in common. So we factor out the 2x first. And we're left with x squared plus 11x plus 28. Now that we're ready to factor the trinomial, you see that your coefficient of x squared is, is back to being a 1. So we're ready to factor. I'm going to leave the 2x here in front. To get x squared, we do x times x. Now we need numbers that multiply to give us 28, but add to give us 11. How about 2 and 14? Nope. How about 4 and 7? Yes. So x plus 4 and x plus 7. Now you know we have to throw a word problem in here, so let's look at this rectangle. This rectangle has an area of x squared plus 10x plus 16, and we want to know what the length and the width of the rectangle are. Well, we know that area is length times width. So if I have that the area is x squared plus 10x plus 16, if I factor that, it should give me the length and the width. So what multiplies to give me 16, 1 and 16, 2 and 8, and 4 and 4? Which pair adds to give you 10, 2 and 8, so x plus 2 and x plus 8. So it looks to me like the length is the long side here. So I would say the length is the x plus 8 and the width is the x plus 2. So the length and the width are x plus 8 and x plus 2. Now what if they asked us about, about the perimeter? Well, we know perimeter is the distance all the way around, right? So you might draw yourself a rectangle and label your sides. We have x plus 2, x plus 8, x plus 2, and x plus 8. So if we add up all those sides, the perimeter would be equal to, well, x plus x plus x plus x, that would be 4x, plus 2 plus 8 plus 2 plus 8 would be 20, so the perimeter would be 4x plus 20. And I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here, but I'm going to make another video just with more practice problems on factoring. So if you need a little more help, there will be a second video with practice problems on it.